Okay. So uh, we continue with our uh, uh, lectures on graph theory. Today uh, we are going to discuss uh, what is called acyclic graphs uh, in the first part. So what is uh, what is an acyclic graph? As the name suggests, uh, a graph that does not contain uh, any cycles. So they are called acyclic graphs. Or uh, a more uh, uh, commonly used word uh, is a forest. So acyclic graphs are called forests. Now, uh, you know, so here is an example of a forest. If you want to look at this, uh, so you can you can see uh, this graph represented below. Uh, does not have any cycles in it. So all the uh, you know uh, all the components uh, of a forest are called trees. So components are the uh, maximal connected subgraphs, right? if you remember. So uh, you can see that there is this uh, one component. Then uh, there are these two single vertices, the 17 and 16 are the components. Then there is this path uh, on uh, uh, three vertices, uh, which is another component, and uh, then you have uh, uh, a vertex with uh, several neighbors. This is another component, and there is a path again on four vertices. Right? So uh, these are all uh, examples of uh, uh, trees, and that together form uh, an acyclic graph, uh, which we call a forest. Okay, so here we have a forest. Now there is a special name for the uh, this uh, type of graph where we have one central vertex and uh, every other vertex is a neighbor. Such a tree is called uh, a star. And uh, uh, stars are also uh, some important uh, class of uh, trees we will, we will see sometime. Now, uh, so this is an example of cyclic. Now, uh, you know, uh, here is one theorem. Suppose you are given uh, an acyclic graph, let's say F, okay. and assume that uh, this uh, forest has at least one edge. When you can you can have just uh, isolated vertices, uh, but apart from that, if you have just uh, a, a graph with at least one edge, then uh, this uh, forest has at least two vertices of degree exactly equal to one. So the uh, vertices of degree 1 are called leaves. So in a tree, if you have a vertex of degree 1, they are called leaves of the tree. So how do you prove this theorem? Okay. So you want to show that given an acyclic graph with at least one edge, uh, it contains at least two vertices of degree exactly equal to 1. Now maybe you should think about this uh, for a few minutes. Uh, it's, it's very easy to come up with a proof. Uh, but uh, there are several ways to do this, but here is one. So we already looked at this kind of extremal uh, questions. So take uh, any non-trivial component uh, of the uh, forest and then uh, consider uh, a maximum length path in that. So whatever is the longest path. So take uh, even any graph, what you do is that you look at the longest uh, path in this graph and then uh, we we look at the uh, endpoints of this let's say u and v okay. so you have uh, this path uh, uv which is a maximum length path in one of the components right any component that you are taking and then uh, then uh, look at uh, look at the Look at the end vertices u and v. We are looking at non trivial components, so there is at least one edge. Now, what can we say about the uh, degree of u? Okay. So, I claim that the degree of u cannot be uh, more than one. I mean, it has to be exactly equal to one. So, why is this? So, if you, if you look at uh, the vertex u, suppose it has uh, any other neighbor, right? If it has any other neighbor, let's say u dash. The vertex u dash uh, cannot be outside the path because if it is outside the path, we can get a longer path by starting from u dash to u right? and then continuing on the path. So this will give me a longer path, but we started with the maximum length path. Right? So therefore, 
you cannot have any other uh, neighbors i mean outside outside the path now if it has a neighbor inside the path right then what does what does it say suppose this neighbor of you is inside the path then uh, you know you have some neighbor in the path then you already have the uh, connection between these two at the uh, along the path uh, uv and uh, then you have this additional loops which creates a cycle but we started with the assumption that the graph is acyclic so therefore this is also not possible which uh, says that uh, the vertex uh, u must have degree exactly equal to 1 now the same argument holds for v so therefore uh, uh, u and v must be vertices of degree equal to 1 so this is true for any maximal path so therefore uh, uh, uh we can show that the tree contains at least uh, any non trivial forest contains at least uh, two uh, uh vertices of uh, degree x and equal to okay so and and this of course holds for uh, you know we proved it for a just a single tree any non trivial tree so if there are several components then you can you can say that there are several leaves in that tree right okay so here is the proof we'll let uh, f be an acyclic graph and uh, t be a non trivial component now consider the path of the maximum length in t say p is equal to u1 to uk every neighbor of u1 is mentioned uh, and uh, of course uh, uk also lies on the path p right uh, because otherwise we said that there is a longer path now if there is a, a neighbor which uh, is other than the you know the immediate neighbor in the path then there is going to be a cycle so therefore the graph is a cyclic i mean uh, therefore the vertices is not degree one uh, because the graph is a cyclic right okay now here are some uh, uh, here is a homework question show that the following are equal so this is a uh, very important result in uh, uh, in in the study of uh, cyclic graphs so these are the statements okay first statement is that t is a tree okay so given a graph uh, t right uh, the the graph t is a tree uh, that is equivalent to the statement that there is a unique path between any two vertices of uh, the graph t uh, and uh, they are also equivalent to saying that uh, t is a connected Uh, graph, but t minus e uh, is not connected for any edge e in the graph. Okay, so for every edge, uh, t minus e is uh, disconnected, but uh, t itself is connected. So in this sense, uh, we can say t is minimally connected. So if the graph is minimally connected, then it must be uh, a tree. And uh, the uh, you know the graph t is a cyclic. Right, there is no cycle. but if you add any uh, edge right which was not present right so suppose you and we are not adjacent you add an edge uh, u to v then it creates a cycle in the uh, graph t if this is true for every non edge u and v right so if u v is non edge you add to it it creates a cycle so if that is true for every non edge then uh, we say that uh, is also a tree so these are uh, all equivalent so we have to show that uh you know like uh, let's say something like 1 implies 2 implies 3 implies 4 implies 1 like so whichever way you want you can show this but show that uh, these statements are all equivalent so uh the proposition is as follows a connected graph of uh, order n which means the number of edges is n is a tree uh, if and only if it has n minus 1 edges so uh, we are given uh, that like the graph is connected which means that uh, any two any two uh, vertices there is a path connecting them and it has exactly n minus n edges right now suppose suppose uh, we have a tree okay so we have to show uh, two things right suppose that the given graph is a tree uh, then it has we have to show that it has exactly n minus n edges and we have to show that Uh, if a connected graph has exactly n minus n edges, then uh, it is uh, connect uh, is uh, acyclic. Right? That is what we want. Okay. 
so uh, so here is the proof right so let us let us first uh, show that Let us first show that uh, if uh, the graph is a tree, then it has exactly n minus 1. So, the, uh, you know, so because it is a tree, of course, we know that it is connected, right? Now, uh, let us take, let us take uh, uh, an n vertex empty graph without any edges, right? And then, uh, add edges one by one. Okay. Now, what happens when I add an edge? When I add an edge, if uh, uh, if I take two, you know, di distinct components, so different components which are not connected by an edge, and put an edge between them, then these two components, because so each component, for example, I have this component and this component, right? right. If I if I take any vertex here and any vertex here. And then connect them with an edge. Okay. Then what happens? Uh, this entire thing becomes a component because in this component I can go from any vertex to any other vertex because there is a path, right? By definition. And uh, similarly, from uh, this vertex, let's say this is x and y. Then uh, from y to any other vertex in this component, I can. Right? Now to find a path from any vertex to any vertex in this big uh, part, all I have to do is that. Take a path from uh, the starting vertex to let's say u, then take the edge u to uh, I mean x x and x to y, and from y to any other vertex that we have here. Right? So this should give uh, uh, as a, a path between any two edges. So therefore, if I take two distinct components and put an edge between you know some vertices of these two, then I will get a connected uh, you know, larger component. Right? So this is. So, which says that if I add an edge between two distinct components, the number of components decreases by exactly one. Right? And of course, it cannot decrease by more than one because an edge only can connect two components. So, if I start with n vertices, then when I add one edge, it can reduce the number of components by one. Right? So, I start with exactly how many components? Uh, n components. Then I add uh, one edge, it decreases the component by one. Then I add one more edge, right? It decreases the components again by one, right? If, if I am connecting two distinct components. Now, if I if I add an edge between the vertices of a component, it will not uh, decrease the number of components. So let us, but it will create a cycle, right? So for the time being, let us not add such an edge, right? Uh, and let us see that we just uh, keep on increasing uh, the edges so that the number of uh, components decreases every time. Now, if I do this, right, uh, to maximize the uh, you know, minimize the number of components, then because I start with n uh, components, I need to add at least n minus one edges to make the graph connect. Right? So every time I add an edge. It only decreases the number of components by one. So start with n, then n minus one, n minus two, etc. If it becomes one, then I have added at least n minus one edges. So before adding n minus one edges, we cannot make the graph connected. So we need to have at least n minus one edges. Now, can we have more than n minus one edges? Right? Right. So at least n minus one edges are required to make the graph connected. But suppose you add one more edge. Right. So if the graph is already connected. And then you add edge between uh, uh, vertices of uh, some component, then you automatically create a cycle because there is distinct path between uh, two uh, disjoint path between these uh, bits, the edge and the path in the open. So therefore, that is not uh, uh, there. Right? So therefore, we we see that uh, if the graph is a tree, which means that connected and a cyclic. Then uh, it has exactly n minus one edges because it cannot have more than n minus one edges because once it becomes connected, you cannot uh, you cannot add uh, any more edges. And to become connected, you need even we can make it more precise if you want. Now here is a uh, here is another uh, uh, observation 
that uh, is something that we defined earlier, but we can define in a different way. Okay? So we define a rooted tree, right? Uh, in 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 the earlier uh, case when we looked at functional diagrams, we defined rooted trees are uh, trees where there is uh, exactly one uh, cyclic vertex. So those uh, were called the roots, and then we had the rooted uh, uh, tree as this functional diagram. Now uh, we, you know. We can also uh, give a rooted uh, tree uh, by the following. We have an undirected graph, and you just make one of the vertices as special vertices okay? and call it a root. That becomes a rooted tree. Okay? So this is uh, the natural or the you know the first way. Uh, the I think people have come up with the, uh, the notion of rooted trees because uh, you know you take uh, take a tree and then consider one of the starting vertex or uh, initial vertex or special vertex, which we call root. Okay. So you take any arbitrary tree, pick any vertex and make it a special vertex say that this is the root. So that becomes a rooted tree. Right? We can you know start from a vertex and pick any of the vertices to make root. So there is uh, this uh, graph that we get. Right? This is uh, this is a rooted tree where this vertex is special. Right? And uh, instead uh, you know I take this uh, same graph and make this a special, then I get another root. Now, there is a one-to-one -one correspondent between the rooted trees that we come up with like this and the functional diagram which is rooted. Because we observe that in the functional diagram, if you have a cyclic vertex, then every path from other vertices must lead to this vertex. It should all be coming into this because this vertex already has an out degree, right? So it cannot have any other incoming entry, I mean, uh, outgoing entry. So therefore, every edge to it uh, must be incoming. Now, because of this, you know, this vertex, its naive edge also must be uh, incoming edges, right? So we can, you know, follow this uh, argument and show that uh, once you fix a, a root, right, then, you know, all the paths must converge to this cyclic vertex uh, or the root. So uh, that is how we, we get the functional line. Now, so that rooted tree is uh, exactly uh, equivalent to this because uh, all you are doing is that, okay, whatever is, once you fin finish the root, every path converges, right? Basically, uh, from every leaf, you go find a path to this vertex, which is directed path. So, uh, because that is a unique way uh, to do it, we see that they, there is a violation between these two. So therefore, we can now call uh, any of these as rooted tree without worrying about uh, uh, you know which uh, definition it comes from, and we can use it uh, as it is, and uh, you know we can uh, you know, go from one to the other and etc. So uh, this is uh, a simple observation. Now, what are the main questions that we are interested in in combinatorics? It's of course counting questions. So here are some natural counting questions that arises. Of course, there are many more. I just mentioned a few, right? So one question is that what can we say about the number of trees on the uh, vertex set V, let's say. So given a vertex set uh, V, V on to Vn, we want to see how many distinct trees you can make on this, right? So with the label V on to Vn. Now, uh, the number of uh, trees, let's say that where each vertex a degree is now specified. Let's say Vi has a degree exactly Di. Right, V two as degree exactly D two as Now, in this case, can we uh, count the number of trees? Or uh, if you say that you know the number of uh, non-isomorphic uh, trees on any vertex, because when you have labeled uh, trees, uh, there could be isomorphism between the uh, corresponding uh, trees, some of them. Right. So, if there are isomorphism, when we don't want uh, you know to count all of them, we want to just how many, uh, how many. Uh, uh, trees are there which are uh, uh, equivalent under the uh, isomorphs, right? I mean, uh, distinct under the uh, isomorphs. So, how many classes are there right? under this equivalence relation of isomorphs? So, uh, that is another question one can think about, right? You can ask number of rooted trees, number of acyclic graphs, right? Uh, 
All this we can ask about just the uh, cyclic graphs. So these are all uh, questions. Some of these we will try to tackle uh, now, and some of these we can we can try to work out uh, when we when we look at uh, further uh, topics like you know maybe the species and things like that. We might find an easier way to do this. But we will look at a couple of things uh, at the moment. Now, <clears throat> here is the one of the questions, right? So, you know, so what was this question that uh, you know, the number of uh, trees with degree of UI is equal to DI? So, here is a theorem which explains uh, our counts. So, number of trees on uh, the vertex at V, where degree of UI is equal to DI, is given by n minus 2 factorial over uh, uh, d1 minus 1 uh, factorial i think there is a missing into uh, dn minus 1 uh, factorial okay so d1 minus 1 factorial d2 minus 1 factorial etc dn minus 1 factorial where the summation di is equal to twice the number of edges we know that right the total degree is uh, uh, and the twice the number of edges, and therefore that must be equal to 2 into n minus 2 because the tree has exactly n minus 1 edges. Also. So, therefore, uh, here is the formula that uh, given uh, uh, a vertex at v1 to vn, and given uh, that every vertex vi has uh, degree is equal to di, we can construct trees uh, only if, of course, summation di is equal to n minus 2, right? otherwise, we cannot do that. And if uh, this is uh, this sum is uh, equal to n minus two, then uh, the formula is given by n minus two factorial divided by d one minus one factorial into d two minus one factorial into two d n minus one factorial. Okay. So now, how do you prove this? Okay. So here is a proof. So what we uh, are going to do is to use induction on uh, n. So the base case, uh, you know, n equal to one is trivial because there is, you know, there is no edge, there is one uh, tree, and that's it. Uh, you can see that the formula holds. And for n is equal to two, again there is a unique tree, right? What is the unique tree? The single edge, right? That is a tree. Uh, and uh, this happens precisely when d1 and d2 is equal to one. And in the other cases, right? D1 is equal to like, like two and uh, uh, d to zero, we can see that there is no tree. Right? This is something that you can immediately see. So therefore, uh, again, we can see that you know the formula uh, holds. You just verify this. So once you have the base cases, let us assume that uh, n is at least two. Uh, uh, n is strictly greater than two. So we have proved one and two. And now suppose the result holds if the number of vertices is less than or equal to n minus one. Right. So if the uh, number of vertices is strictly less, then uh, it holds. Now, what we do is that we take uh, the the set of trees on uh, on the vertex set V1 to Vn with the degree of Va is equal to D. So collect all this, right? So given this uh, sequence D1 uh, to uh, Dn with the degree of Va is equal to Di. We look at the set of all trees that we can construct on the vertex of to be in with this property. Okay. So consider the set and call it as X. Right. So we can observe uh, uh, that uh, you know the uh, you know DA cannot be zero for any n, right? Because we are talking about trees, and uh, because it is connected, you know, like this is one way to look at this, right? Uh, you know, we cannot create uh, any tree if d a is zero for some some right? Because it cannot be connected. As far as you know, uh, we are not looking at the trivial tree where n is equal to one. We are assuming that n is strictly greater than two, right? So therefore, we can think of uh, this and say that okay, now uh, d a cannot be zero because uh, the graph is going to be closed. so there is not three possible. So if d a is zero, we will see that like you know. Uh, in this uh, formula, right, we will get uh, di minus one factorial that becomes uh, 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 a problem in our definition. So that's that for it doesn't make sense. So we will say that that is 
that is not possible. So therefore, uh, dA is uh, equal to zero is ruled out. Now, so suppose uh, dJ is equal to one for some uh, some j. This we can always assume why because suppose uh, you know for every uh, every di right was uh, greater than or equal to two, then we have we have n di right. So therefore the sum is going to be equal to two n. I mean it's greater than two n minus two. Right? If every vertex has degree at least two, there are n vertices. Total degree will be more than two n. So therefore uh, we know that since di is not uh, non zero, it must be equal to one for some vertex. So let us say dj is the vertex uh, whose uh, degree is one. Okay, that is at least one. Okay. So let us fix uh, this particular vertex dj whose degree is going to be one. Now what we what we notice is that like now by the definition of uh, the way we can check this, right? D of v i is equal to d i for all the graphs in X. Right? So which means that for the graph that we are going to consider in X, the degree of v j is going to be always one. Right? So v j is going to be a leaf in all the trees in X. Okay. So what we can see is that you know all the trees that we are considering, v j is always going to be a leaf. Which means that it has exactly one nail, right? Now we collect these nail weights, right? And then make another set like this, right? For every tree in A, that AK is the set of all trees uh, such that VJ, VK is an edge in the tree, right? Because VJ has a unique neighbor, it is going to be exactly uh, uh, 1K for. Uh, a given tree, right? So that k it will be different from j because uh, there is no loop in our trees, right? So therefore, for uh, uh, for every uh, uh, case, we can consider the possible uh, case, right? So a k is basically the set of all trees such that v j v k is in the edge of t, right? So, you know, so we are basically now collecting with the index of the uh, neighbor of this particular vertex vj. That could be different in different trees, right? But of course, the degree of vj is actually equal to 1, but the neighbors could be different in each of the different trees. Now, because we, you know, this ak uh, must cover, right, all of a in at least some of these uh, cases. A is going to be disjoint union uh, AK. And this is disjoint union because you cannot have two uh, different case uh, intersecting. Right? Because you know, there is a precisely unique neighbor for uh, BJ. So therefore, we get a disjoint union of uh, AK, uh, which is equal to A. Now, let us pick some K which is different from J of course, right? So uh, like so what we do is that we are going to we are going to uh, delete this uh, single uh, degree vertex which is a leaf right vj once i delete the vertex vj what happens right because it's a leaf it is not connected to anything other than its unique neighbor and uh, every path from this vertex because the tree is connected to every other vertex is actually going through the neighbor right so, if I remove this particular leaf, the remaining graph is still going to be connected. It right? is something that you can immediately see from the structure of a tree. Right? If you remove uh, the leaves, it does not affect the connectivity of the remaining part. So, therefore, we are going to get uh, trees uh, on, on the vertex set uh, you know, uh, V minus uh, Vj. Right? So, V1 to Vj minus 1, then Vj plus 1 to Vn. Right? So, on n minus 1 vertices, we get trees which are uh, again connected and what is the property of the trees uh, that we obtain this way for all the trees degree of vi is equal to di right? because we have not changed the degree of anything except uh, uh, for vk right so for i not equal to k degree of v is actually equal to uh, di now once you right so once you uh, 
once you observe this what happens to uh, degree of bk degree of bk changes exactly by one right it reduces by one because we just removed one of its neighbors so it is going to be dk minus 1 right now we can see that there is a bijection between the uh, between the trees uh, ak that we are looking at and and the set of trees that we obtain here by deleting this because now, we precisely have the same thing here except we removed one leaf. And if you have anything here with this degree sequence, we can also add a, add a leaf, make it adjacent to one of the vertices, right? And then we will get a uh, tree in, uh, in A, right? So it must be present in one of the A case. So therefore, there is a one to one correspondence. So the cardinality of AK is precisely the cardinality of the trees that we obtain this way. Now the trees that we obtain this way is all trees, right? That we can get where the degree sequence is given here, right? All trees on n minus one vertices where the degree sequence is given here, right? D of V A is equal to D I, I not equal to K, and degree of V of P K is equal to D K minus one, right? So now we can use index, right? So what is the induction? Right. So, well, whatever is the number of vertices, right, which is n minus 1 in this case, minus 2, right, n minus uh, 2 becomes n minus 1 minus 2 factorial. So, we have n minus 3 factorial divided by, right, the degree sequence, whatever it was given, that di minus 1 factorial, etc., into uh, each of them, right. So, now here the degree, the first one is degree of vk is dk minus 1. So, that minus 1, which is dk minus 2 factorial. Then product over uh, all the other remaining times, right? Di minus one factorial of i not equal to j and uh, k. Okay. Now this is okay, this is just manipulation now, right? So this is the uh, cardinality of k, and now that is equal to uh, n minus a factorial into dk minus one because I just multiply by dk minus one factorial and dk minus one on the uh, on the above and below, right? So therefore, this becomes dk minus two factorial to dk minus one becomes dk minus one factorial, which I can take inside, right? I can take it inside, and then uh, the numerator at that time is remaining, right? So that then I will get n minus three factorial to dk minus one into product i not equal to j d a minus one factorial. Now here is something that we should observe that uh, you know so i not equal to j right you know there is one time uh, still missing from our general formula but what is that time that time is uh, dj minus one factor right but we know that dj is equal to uh what right degree of vj is dj which is equal to one because dj equal to one dj minus one factorial is zero factorial which is also one so i can as well put that time inside right? doesn't make any difference because dj is one so then I can just write it uh, product over all uh, i d i minus 1 factorial because it doesn't matter whether I add uh, that particular case of d j. So therefore I will get uh, this without i uh, equal to j so I can even write it this way. Now, uh, so what is, the, what is the cardinality of uh, a? Well, it is the sum over all uh, k different from j cardinality of a k, right, by definition here, right, it's a union over all k, a k, and uh, uh, what we have, well, summation over all k not equal to j, summation, I mean, uh, 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 equal to j, n minus a factorial into dk minus 1 by product i not equal to j, um, d a minus 1 factorial. Now, we can write this as, uh, as we just mentioned in the previous slide, right, we can write the summation n minus 3 factorial to dk minus 1 by product over all i d i minus 1 factorial. Now, since uh, these terms are not uh, depending on, uh, on k, we can just take it out. So, we get n minus 3 factorial by product uh, uh, over all i d i minus 1 factorial. Summation k not equal to j dk minus 1. Now, what is this sum? Well, this is the sum of uh, the degrees where k is different from j and uh, we can see that it is actually equal to n minus 2, right. So, uh, because uh, you know, we are basically saying that summation dk 
minus you know so summation decay is 2n minus 2 then we have like minus the uh, you know uh, 2n minus summation decay is uh, yeah k naught equal to this is a 2n minus uh, uh, 3 minus n minus minus 3 minus n minus 1 which will be n minus 2 right so this is equal to n minus 2 factorial by product uh, d a minus n minus 2 so this uh, gives us the uh, induction and therefore uh, we show that uh, this uh, formula uh, is true by induction right so the number of trees on the vertex at b1 to bn where degree of ba is equal to uh, fixed number da is given by this provided summation is going to be 2n minus the degree sum should be equal to twice the number of factors Okay, so we have proved that. Now, since we have this, we can use this to find the uh, number of uh, all trees. Okay, on we came in because for each degree sequence, now we know how to find it. So you can sum over all this thing. We can get the. So that is a homework for you, right? Show that the total number of trees on we want to be in is n raised to n minus two by using the above result, right? That for a given degree sequence, we have this uh, n minus 2 factorial by product d a minus 1. So that sum should be equal to n raised to n minus 2. Right? So show this by uh, uh, using the previous. Now again, once we have this, we can immediately show that the number of rooted trees on, uh, on the vertex at 1 to n is n power n minus 1. Okay, this is also uh, immediate consequence. Once you have this, this is easy. Uh, 